Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. We got a great video for you. We're actually going to do an in-depth walk around on a Pro Series CNC router. A lot of times our videos are about making stuff. Today we're going to focus on the machine itself. Let's get started. The Shop Saber Pro Series CNC routers are basically used for panel processing, and that's why we have large tables. So that could be for plywood, it could be for plastic, non-ferrous, it could be in industries like the sign industry, cabinet, store fixtures, office for all of those industries would use a machine with this type of configuration. You know, one of the questions I get asked the most is how do you evaluate the quality of a CNC machine tool? And I always start out and I say, well, it's actually easy. I start from the ground up and I first take a look at the frame. And we're really fortunate because I happen to have a frame that just came out of the welding shop. Let's go take a look at it. What you see here is a one piece, all welded structural steel frame. We control every part of manufacturing at Shop Saber CNC. So that gives us control from the conceptual ideas all the way to a service and a machine in the shop. One of our requirements is North American steel only, and we do that for a couple reasons. One, the consistency is better than virtually anything you get in the world, and because it's consistent, that opens up an avenue for computer design, because now we can use computer packages to actually do the engineering design of the frames, and we can test them before we ever fabricate one for physical test. Now, once the design's determined, then the frames are welded together, then they're stress relieved, and then they're actually milled on an aerospace machine tool in one setup, and that frame has the accuracy that machine tool had. I always like to take these frames that just came out of the machine shop and look at the wells. Wow, those are good. That tells you so much about the company and it tells you so much about the welders. The wells that you see on the inside are every bit as good as what you see on the outside. That tells you a whole lot about Shop Saber CNC. This machine gets a vacuum table, and let me show you how we incorporated that into the frame design. There's basically a large manifold that's a frame member, and that manifold has vacuum ports on top, and they're large. But if you think those are large, you should see the port on the back that connects to the vacuum pump. Having a great vacuum pump's one thing, but you still have to get the vacuum to the part, and nobody beats a shop saver design. Now let's take a look at the gantry. What you see here is a gantry assembly ready to go on a machine. Now let's take a closer look at some of the details. First off, you have gantry supports on the end, and just like the gantry itself, they're also made out of structural steel. The structural steel in the main gantry is half inch thick, and that's all driven by finite element analysis, just like on the, on the bases. Now you'll see some pieces on the front that are welded on, those are called datums. Those are welded on the gantry tubes, then the actual machining is done for mounting the contour guide rails, and the accuracy of that machining actually determines the accuracy of the machine itself. You know, that's one of the reasons why Shop Saber CNC's have such great edge finish and so good accuracy. It's the details we put into the machining and preparation. Now let's go back to our machine. Now you can see the precision contour guide rails actually bolted to the gantry. We use precision contour guide rails in the X, Y, and Z axis. They actually create what we call the axis of motion. Now let's look at what actually makes that motion happen. These machines have precision ball screws in the X, Y, and Z axis. That always brings us to discussion about ball screws and rack and pinions, and we do both technologies here, so we, we know a lot about it. Ball screws kind of function here and rack and pinions down here in terms of performance. And let's talk about why. For rack and pinions to actually function, there has to be some play, and it's called backlash. And there's typically three to five thousandths on each end so that the gantry moves smoothly from the front to back. The problem with that, when you get into real precise stuff, somewhere on that table you'll have a problem. You'll have a bad edge on a, it could be on an aluminum part, it could be on an MDF door, it could be on a piece of, of plastic that will show up. We don't have that problem with ball screws because ball screws are preloaded, so there's not any play in. In fact, the machines that do all the precision machining on these frames are all ball screw drives. You know, something else that's funny, a lot of the companies that'll tell you that rack and pinions are just as good, use ball screws and Z. Now, let's talk about what actually causes everything to turn. We use Mitsubishi closed loop AC digital servos. We even use glass encoders on there because they're more accurate. Now, the reason we do that is because it takes a lot of power to really take advantage of everything we've engineered into this machine frame. A lot of machines in our price range still use steppers, and so let's unpack that a little bit. Steppers, number one, are limited on power, and you have to be real careful because if you overpower it, 
the next move's random. There's no way for the actual motor to feed back to the controller and say there's a problem. We don't have that problem with servos. If we have a problem with one of our servos, it feeds back a signal to the controller and everything gets stopped before a catastrophe happens. That's why we use AC digital servos. Now, let's look at the final part of machine control, and that's machine control itself. We created the Shop Saber CNC control on a very robust technology, and we, we knew we needed to do that because of reliability. But there's another part of CNC control that's people related, and that's how easy is it to actually run. Now, in the past, you had to choose one or the other. You either had to have a clunky industrial control that was hard to learn to use, or you had a Windows PC control that had reliability issues. Well, we said, well, wait a minute, there, there's a way to do this. We combined a te both technologies so that gives you the robustness of industrial control, yet we run the Windows interface for the user in a Windows computer that opens up the outside world to you. So you can run software on the machine control. And it doesn't take an engineering degree for your operator to be successful. Let me show you how easy this is to run. One of our goals in developing the ShopSaber Pro Series was to create a machine experience for the operator that would be really, really simple. And I think what you see on the screen epitomizes that. Basically, everything you need to run this machine is on a single screen. Now, let's take a closer look at that. Over here, we've got an area that, where the G code or the actual program is displayed. Right? This area up here has buttons that have to do with moving the machine. So you see X, Y, and Z axis, and you can go in positive or negative directions. I can go slow, medium, or fast, or actually incrementally. In fact, I can move the machine a thousandth of an inch in any direction if I want to, so I can get really, really precise setups. And oh, by the way, there are also keyboard shortcuts that correspond to those buttons. When you move a little further down, you see more daily tasks, like homing the machine, touching tools off, those kinds of things. Up here, you see a graphic display, so when the machine moves, you see that here. And a thing that we added to that over to the side is now we can actually uh, adjust uh, spindle RPMs and feed rates while the machine's running. Here's the feed rates and here's the RPMs. And so you can really tune that in where the cut sounds really, really good. Now this area down here is interesting. This is actually the machine table. And as I jog the machine, you can actually see where the spindle location is. Let's go to fast, and you can see it moves around. X, there's Y. Now, let me show you something that's really neat. Let's say, for instance, that I want to jog this back, and at the end of the cut, I want it to go park somewhere. So let's say I want the machine to park maybe right here. That's where, when the program's finished, I want it to park there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that. I'm going to select P10 for Park 10. I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to say Get That Position. Now watch what happens. If I jog the machine somewhere else, and I want it to go to that position, all I have to do is select P10 and go, and it goes there automatically. And what's nice is I can incorporate that into a program so that at the end of the program, it will go to that position. Now, let's actually load a program, and let's look at how easy this is. I go up here to File, Open, and we're, this is a cabinet program. And if I hit this icon, you see what's on the screen. So now automatically my operator can look at that screen and see if that's what they think they're going to run on the machine and see if, see if that, that's hopefully that's the nest they, they want to run. And you can see back here at the end of the program, it went to that park position. Then all I have to actually do to run this is hit the green button and it starts executing. And you can see on the screen where the spindle's going and it's actually cutting those parts out. It's a really, really neat way to operate a CNC router. Now let's take a look at Super Z technology. You know, there's a little story that goes along with Super Z technology. Let me unpack it for you a little bit. One of the things we've always tried to do at ShopSaber is get the maximum performance of anybody in the industry on our machines. Well, one of the areas that you look into has to do with how much clearance you have under the gantry, and can you really use that? Well, the only way you can really use that is to have more travel in the Z-axis because you have to compensate for the length of the tool sticking out of the spindle. While we were working on that project, we realized something else. You also have a lot of horsepower here, and you have to have all that supported when you're cutting or you don't get the very best possible finishes. So what we did is we developed through engineering this stiffener system using finite element analysis. And the consequence of that is it gave us great support, great edge finishes. Now another part of 3D machining has to do with speed. Most people don't realize that the 3D machining speed is determined by the speed of the Z axis. Now here's what's happening. 
you have around those bit that's moving through the material and going up and down. The speed you go up and down determines the, the, how long it takes to do the 3D surface. We say, okay, well, what's going on here? Well, because you have mass here and you have gravity, that's weight. So in order for that to raise and lower, we have to overcome that weight. So our solution was to put a balancing cylinder. What that balancing cylinder is compensates for that weight. Now it's much easier to accelerate and decelerate that head. That's where the speed comes from. That's why these machines are so fast in 3D machining. Now let's take a look at automatic tool change. You know, the same thing that makes Super Z really fast in 3D machining also makes it really fast in tool changing. These machines are incredibly fast at tool changing. This particular machine has a 10 position tool changer on there. We also offer it with five and allow you to add five later. I just love this system because there's no moving parts. And if you notice down on the end, there's another device here that's all part of it and it's tool touch off and it's automatic. And it, it, here's, here's why we need that. Whenever you put a tool in a collet, you have to tell the machine at some point where the tip of that tool is and that's called tool touch off. Now, this is an automatic system. So I just hit a button on the machine controller and it comes over and touches it off. Some machines have little pucks and stuff you have to hold under the table. It's really cumbersome to do that. This is a really automatic system. Now, let me give you a real world scenario here. Let's say that we're machining and we break a bit. It happens occasionally. All I have to do is stop the machine, change the bit, touch it off. I can start the machine right where it left off and continue machining. Now, let's say that we fly cut the spool board. So that changes the level of everything. All I have to do is touch one tool off and a control takes care of everything else. That's how intelligent this system is. Now you understand what's so important about Super Z technology. Let's take a look at the vacuum table. If you can't hold the part, you can't machine the part. That's why we put so much effort in our vacuum table designs. Let's take a closer look at this. First off, this machine has a phenolic vacuum table. We also offer them in some additional materials. And this one's actually a five foot machine, but if you measure it, the table's actually wider than that. It's actually 72 inches. And we do that for a couple reasons, but one of the reasons is that later I can actually put a rotary axis on there if I wanted to and still have plenty of clearance. Now let's unpack this table a little bit more. If you notice how it's machined here, it's actually machined with that spindle, so everything lines up. You can see how nice the machining is. Now something that's nice about that is uh, because the table's so accurate, we don't really require gasketing between the, the actual table and the spool board itself. You know, something that also relates to this is this machine has part locator pins. That's a real advantage for your operator because it makes it much easier to locate the material onto the table. At the end of the day, your stack of parts is taller. Now, let's look at what actually gets vacuumed to here. Once we get to the main manifold, we actually have eight different ports that go out with four valves so we can control vacuum to these places. If you can't get the vacuum to the part, you can't hold the part. Now, vacuum doesn't work in every application. So a real popular option that we have are T-slots. Basically, T-slots allow you to bolt fixtures to the table for machining. You know, when you look at this whole concept, you can see the effort that American manufacturer like Shop Saber CNC put in this important part of this technology. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been in this industry a long time. We really wanted to showcase all the neat features on the Shop Saber Pro Series. And I think you understand why it's one of the most popular machines in the world in its class. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.